I was very fortunate. I was born in the first half of that last century, the 20th century. And I grew up in New Orleans, and it was still an apartheid state when I was, when I was growing up. And uh, so my first activism was actually an awareness of the, uh, of the, the horrors of racial segregation of the apartheid state. And it was also this community of people who we were together, I was together with. It wasn't I standing alone. But um, so I had, I, I started, I got this taste, this, this original taste of both being part of a community and standing against evil. I think it's really important for people to stand up against whatever we see as injustice. Um, protesting, I think, is a very important piece of that, in part because it does strengthen our communities. It's a way of also learning some things. I think it's important for, for people who are protesting, people who, who have ideas that things aren't okay to really educate themselves. And if they're getting it at their schools, at their you know, centers of learning, it's great. If you're not, then become an autodidact and read everything you can. I think increasingly, as I get older, I'm aware of the importance of, of being open to hear what other people have to say. So I think it's really important for us to uh, to be aware of, of what the enemies are and that it isn't a person. You know, it's not Barack Obama, it's not whoever, you know, George Bush, it's, it's not John Brennan. You know, they're functionaries in a system that's really out of control. Well, well I, I'll tell you, this is, this is a, a thing I think that, that we look at, at the lifespan of people. There was a, uh, uh, an African philosopher, Melodome Somme, and a, a quote of his, and again, I'll paraphrase, because I'm getting old and I don't remember exact quotes. But he, he wrote, you know, you can tell when a society is in trouble, it has not enough rituals. And uh, there, are, there are no elders, the adults are bewildered, and the youth are violent. Now, I wasn't really a violent youth, uh, but I certainly was a, a, a bewildered adult. And what I mean by that is I, I got inducted. I became a professional. I became a, a university faculty. Um, and, and I would actually think it was very important if I got a, an invitation to give a talk or to do a presentation. And, uh, and I, they weren't bad, I don't think. And it was, it was quite good, you know. So it wasn't the adults are crazy or bad or anything. They're just bewildered that we, we can get inducted into thinking that the professional guild is the world or the university is, you know, or, or any of these things that, that limit us rather than expand us. So at some point, what, what I was fortunate enough to do was, and I had, you know, I had some, some spiritual practices. I, I have a, a, a Buddhist practice and, uh, and that really informs my, my, my thinking and my, my being. So at some point I thought, well, what, what am I doing in this job? And I realized that I was, I was not too old to work, but I was too old for that job. And so I decided to leave it and to do the kind of work I'm doing now. And to, uh, and to join with other people, particularly my age, to say, we elders have a role here. You know, I don't need to go get a job. I don't need to do a lot of things. I don't need to earn a living. And then we can, you know, we can look at the whole question of economics and what do we really need? There's this great, um, it's one of the Hawaiian rules. It's, you know, there are two ways to be rich. One is to make more and the other is to need less. And so I think that's, that's one of the things that ties in, you know, what do we need? What do I need? You know, and, uh, and to, to really be discerning. You know, I think, I think if there's anything, if we're, if we're talking about being activists, what are some of the things we need to do is we need to take time alone and we need to take time with others looking at what it is we really believe in how we want to live our lives.